Uh, good evening, my fellow citizens. Uh, thank you very much for joining me here today. My name is Elias Monsha, and I'm coming to you live. Uh, obviously, this uh, broadcast is going to be um, available after our live discussion. And so thank you very much for joining me. Now, I do understand that uh, there has been some several changes that Facebook has done. So Facebook has done several changes to their uh, website such that my live, my Facebook um, uh, uh, page may not have the, the broadcast uh, because they had a few, a few issues, but it appears like they've, they've, they've cured it. And yes, in fact, I can confirm here that I can see that um, we are we are live and we are we are we are fine. Okay. Um, I, I thank you very much for joining me today. I want to um, take it a little bit slowly and address some of the questions or concerns that some of you might have. Now, these do not have to be positive concerns, but even negative ones, because I really want, would like to take a little bit of time. I want to take my time to try and explain some of these uh, <clears throat> some of these things. Uh, now, uh, there's been uh, several uh, media coverage of our live broadcast in the mast, and I've been trying to post that on our Facebook page. And the question that is being asked is, um, what? Why are you doing this? Okay. Uh, why do you seem so uh, motivated and animated about things that are happening in Zambia? Why should you be? I think the answer or the, the true question to this should be, why shouldn't we be concerned? Right? I think that should be the issue. Uh, why shouldn't we be concerned at the kind of uh, things that are going on? Why should we just ignore it and and let it pass, right? We are concerned because all of us, we love our country. And all of us believe that the Zambian promise is far greater than the mediocrity to which we have been subjected to. And this mediocrity is not like it's natural, right? It's man-made. Somebody made it to be what it is. And I believe that with our faith in God, our faith in God, we can rise as a country and do far much better than what is currently obtaining. It will be a betrayal of our birthright if we did not act when our country needs us when our people are looking for voices that are going to hold those that are in power currently accountable and those that are going to offer an alternative to what is currently obtaining. It will be a betrayal to our birthright. The accident of our birth, the accident of our nationality, the accident of um, uh, the fact that we are Zambian that particular issue of being a Zambian places a demand on all of us, citizens of this great country, to be able to answer the call when the country is in need. And when the country is in need, we must speak up. This brings me back to the issue. What really motivated the, those who were fighting for independence, for example, what motivated Kenneth Kaunda to stand up to the white colonialists and say no to the Public Order Act and say no to um, discrimination and racism and tribalism and everything? What motivated this young boy from Luwa Mission of Malawan parentage, born in Chinsali? What motivated Kenneth Kaunda to begin mobilizing and organi organizing his people to fight colonialism? What motivated his friends, his childhood friends like Simon Mwansaka Puepue? What motivated them? What is it that was burning in their hearts about their country? Why didn't they just comply? 
with colonialism? Why didn't they just say, well, it's okay, let's just continue doing what we are doing? When their country called upon them, they answered the call. And today Zambia is independent because of the, of the courageous acts of these gentlemen. What made Mama Julia Chikamoneka to say, enough is enough, I'm going to protest. And her form of protest was through undressing, which in our culture is a way to show displeasure at the acts of the district commissioners of those days. Today, Mama Julia Chikamoneka's memory is in our hearts and in our minds. But our memory of Mama Julia Chikamoneka should not just end at history and reading grade seven uh, 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 exams and social studies and civics in grade nine or civics in grade 10 or grade 12. It shouldn't end there. It should continue. And it should continue to where we as a people decide to say, there is something we can do about what we are being subjected to. The reason why we are acting, the reason why we are advocating for a better Zambia is because a better Zambia is possible. And that is why we are doing it. We don't want to surrender to fatalism, you know, to surrender to this idea that things are going to always be the way they are. Because that is not who we are as a country. We are a people that believe that change is possible, beginning from pre-independence leaders. Coming to the uh, Third Republic, it was people who agitated for change. They believed that Kenneth Kaunda, after he had won and he became the leader of our country, he lost on the on the on the on the promise. You know. He lost. He lost. Uh, he lost. He lost on the promise. He lost on what um, uh, he should have done, and so because of that, and because of that, they decided to say that they were going to agitate for some change. It would be a betrayal to not only independence leaders but also to those that fought for a multi-party democratic nation. For us to just ignore that Zambia is going to go back to the one-party state, back to colonialism. The reason why we do what we are doing is because we believe that we've got to stand together as one people to keep Zambia democratic, to keep Zambia prosperous. That is what we must do. And so for those that ask, why do we do what we do? Why are we talking the way we are talking? It is because of the passion we have for this country and to believe that every citizen of our country can and do better and must be given a chance. That is all it is, a chance for the people of Milenge, a chance for the people of Chiwempala, a chance for the people of Chabanyama, a chance for the people of Tuatasha, a chance for the people of Kapisha and Kasompe, a chance for the people of Zambia, all of them, beginning from Nakonde to Livingstone, to Nangoma, to Sesheke, to Mongo, everywhere, to Chipata, to Kapetaoke, to Kacholola, you know where Kacholola is, to Sinda, all those places, the idea that we as a people can give each other chances. That is the reason why we are doing what we are doing. Of course, there are some people who believe that uh, we, 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 <laughs> we shouldn't do it. And with due respect, it is okay for some people to believe that we shouldn't do what we are doing. But one thing is we are not going to stop to talk until our country, to both talk and act until the promise of our country um, um, uh, uh, finds itself, finds an answer, finds development. That is the reason why um, uh, we are doing what we are doing. And so to those who are doubting our resolve, do not doubt. <laughs> we are not doing this because we just want to talk now. And we are not even starting now. Uh, particularly this page, Elias Monsha Facebook page, we opened it in, I opened it in 2009 and the message has been consistent. I'm not beginning to hold power accountable now. I have been doing it for many years. That is my passion. That is my core. That is what I do to hold those in power accountable. We are not starting now. It is not because of President Lungu. President Lungu is very new. He's six years in power. Is it five years in power? 
It has nothing to do with him personally. It has everything to do with the fact that there is a better way to lead our country. And, and there is no one else who can better do it than we ourselves as a people, united together, working together to see that we reach the promise. The promise, the original promise that Kenneth Kaunda fought for as a youth in those days. The same promise that uh, Frederick Chilva and this group of friends say that no, Kenneth Kaunda had, was taking the country the wrong way and fought for democracy. I was only but a very young boy during the fight for, 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 the, uh, for the Third Republic. But I caught on the spirit of freedom, the spirit of democracy. As a grade seven, grade eight, or grade, grade nine in Chiwempala and Chingola, we caught the spirit of freedom. And after having caught it, we cannot let it slide and disappear by the actions of few selfish people. We cannot let it. And so our resolve must be strong to see that our country continues subsisting as a democratic country, that the theft and the corruption is stopped, that a leader who says that he's leading this country must lead in truth, with integrity. They must do that. And if they're not ready to provide that leadership, then they must be excused. Some are doubting to say, uh, what you were doing, what happens if in August President Edgar Lungu is re-elected into office? But that is not the point. The point is to educate our people so that they know where the real problem is. Many Zambians want medicines in hospitals. Many Zambians want to afford a meal. Many of our youths need jobs. Our people want to see that copper benefits the local people benefits the people of Zambia, not just the selected few. Everybody is interested in the Zambian promise, in the Zambian project, in the Zambian experiment. Every one of us is. But we might disagree on who exactly is the issue. For example, on the honeybee scandal, everybody, many people are saying that, no, the only problem here are the individuals in the honeybee scandal. They're the ones who stole from the people of Zambia. But I look at it and I'm like, no, it is a leadership problem. It is a state house problem. That is where the major issue is as far as um, the, uh, all these scandals are concerned in our country. It is, that is where the problem is. That is where we need to put our focus. That is where we need to focus, to advocate for changes. How come, right? We don't have medicines in our hospitals today. We don't. I challenge you tomorrow, Gabuacha, you go to Chuempala Clinic. Go and speak to the nurses. Go and ask them whether they have medication. There is no medication, not even Panadol. You go to Chawama Clinic in Chabanyama. Go and find out. Is there medicine? Go to Lulamba, Lulamba Clinic. Go and find out, is there, is there medicine? What has happened? Our budget for health is 50% med medicines. Where is the medicine? 50% of our health budget in our country, it goes to drugs to help our people get healed. And then these contracts are given to cadres, friends of the president. And it's not that they're going to deliver medication to our people, no. They deliver substandard medication. They deliver fake antibiotics. They deliver rotten Panadol. They deliver leaking condoms. They deliver gloves for our medical personnel that are substandard, exposing our few medical personnel to hepatitis B and several other diseases. We can say that this problem is only restricted to the Minister of Health, but my advocacy is that the real problem here is a state house, the lack of leadership from the president, from the person that we as a people elected in 2015 and 2016. He has lost the will 
and the ability to bring governance to this country. That is why you are having these scandals at Ministry of Health. But it is not only Ministry of Health. If this was just about the scandal at Ministry of Health, you could have excused it and say that it is possible. Somebody might have this, um, um, uh, this problem. It is restricted to uh, the honeybee scandal. It's not. The ambulances, it was the same story. The fire trucks, it was the same story. Fire trucks, for those that do not know, Zambia purchased 42 substandard secondhand fire trucks at $1 million a piece a few years ago. There was no reckoning. The president did not intervene. As a matter of fact, people who, are, who, people who agitated and complained about the fire trucks were arrested. Laura Mitty, Pilato, even this Sean Tembo, president of the uh, Patriotic, uh, uh, is a PEP party. He was arrested. He was arrested while bringing visibility to the issue of fire trucks. $42 million, 42 fire trucks, substandard, secondhand, useless, that they purchased. But that is not the only issue. We have ambulances. We have fire trucks. We have this honeybee scandal, which is itself is, is a scandal every day. And when we look closely at the people that are benefiting from all these scandals, it is friends of the president, which is begging us to ask the question, how come? How come that it is the president's closest friends that are involved in all these scandals? But not to be to be bitter. Those are the issues that are happening with the 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 the, uh, the government branch. Let's look at KCM. What is the issue with KCM? We needed a government that was going to tell us the truth about KCM. What has the government done with KCM? It's a very simple question, but it's a very deep question. It's deep in the sense that once we look closely at what is happening at KCM, it's the same story of what has been happening with other branches of our government. Again, the president's friends. Today, KCM is apparently under what is known as liquidation. The president has used whatever levers of power to give KCM to a liquidator who is his friend. In liquidation, workers can be redundant, or even if the company is not making profits, the liquidator makes the profits. It's now been almost two years. Is it two years or one year? After the issue of liquidation happened, where is the direct? The president went to Chingola and Chilelawombo and told the people, the miners, that he is in control of what is happening in KCM. Again, we ask the question, what is happening at KCM? The company is now in the hands of his friend. And his friend has so much power. That liquidation order gives him extreme power, first of all, to pay himself. And in turn, use that money to pay um, uh, the patriotic front or to bribe whoever needs to be. I, I'm not sure about where that money ends up. It's the liquidator who wins. He has all the rights to sell off assets. We understand now he has split the company. He's selling the smelter. He's selling several other things as he should, because that is what that power gives him. We ask again, it's because we know that when there is a good mining policy, you just follow the policy, that's it. And you're going to resolve all the problems that you have to resolve. But that is not what is happening with KCM. That is not what was going to happen with Mopani. And so that is the reason why we have the concerns that we have. It is because there is a better way there is a better way to run our resources. There is a better way to run government. There is a better way to provide leadership.
There is a better way to change systems to make them much more responsive to the needs of our people. Because unless we are able to supply Panado to that person in Milenge, unless we are able to supply Panado to that person in Lunga, Chisensa, unless we are able to supply Panado to all those people, then what are we here for? Why are we a nation? Unless we are able to provide um, an assurance that every Zambian life is precious. Now, when we say this, I'm a preacher myself, and some of you have issues with the fact that I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher who takes very seriously the importance of the human being, a person, a person who is created in the image and in the likeness of God. The fact that we cannot tolerate the killing of innocent people and the supplying of medications that are going to kill our people, that we shouldn't tolerate. Christianity is not just on the basis of quoting scriptures. It is actually on acting on what God's word tells us, to love others, to love the neighbor, not to close the entire airspace on the copper belt because of one person. That is not Christianity. That is not love for the neighbor. It is not to buy an expensive $200 million jet for the comfort of one person. And we say it is okay. I have differed a little bit with some of my friends within the Pentecostal fraternity. And the reason is because we Pentecostals are a faith of power. And because we are a faith of power, it's very difficult for us to challenge power. Because we admire prosperity. And so when Lungu, for example, shows up in a $200 million jet, we don't question how come. We admire, we want to be blessed with a $200 million jet so that we can move like Lungu. Or to have... Um, um, uh, 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 bodyguards that are going to be watching over our preachers. That is how we have fallen as a Pentecostal community. We are no longer a faith of brothers. The coming of the Pentecostal church, Pentecostal Assemblies of God, and several other preachers that came into our country, it was a faith of, of, of brothers. Brother Saul, Sister Saul. It was egalitarian. It was a faith that was fighting power. It was a faith of the poor. Suddenly, we have lost our way. We are no longer what we were. And as a prophet, sometimes I differ with some of my friends within the Pentecostal fraternity because we are not holding this present government to, 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 to account. That is what drives my passion. I believe that this is a Christian calling to be able to call this government to, to account. And I'm not going to relent. I'm not going to follow simply because there are some people who believe that the, 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 the best way is to be silent and to do what is known as quiet diplomacy. Quiet diplomacy, quite all right, belongs to some of our Pentecostal leaders, and I commend them to go ahead and do that. But it certainly does not belong to my heart or to my passion. Because what is silent about a leaking condom that is going to cause diseases and unwanted pregnancies on our people? What is silent diplomacy about supplying rotten um, uh, medication? What is, what is it? What is, uh, we are going to act and we are going to talk. Thank you. I am willing to answer any, any concerns because today it's supposed to be really, <laughs> I don't know whether I have succeeded. It's, a, it's supposed to be a heart to heart so that you as a people, as my friends, you get exactly where I am coming from and the reason why I do what I am doing. It is just not about me personally, because I can survive, right? But it's not just about our personal survival. 
it is not just about the comfort of our situations because silence is extremely comforting, particularly for a person like me. If I remained silent or if I supported those that are in power, I would in fact be much more comfortable than I am because there is a lot of um, incentives in compliance and silence and in following what everybody is doing or what everybody must be doing or every Pentecostal preacher must be doing. In the arrogance of our faith to say that we Pentecostals know we are, we are not involved in politics, we just follow what the, the leader is doing. No, we don't follow what the leader is doing. If the leader is poisoning our people, we speak out for the, for the weak. We speak out for those that can speak for themselves. And we use this medium because this is the medium that is available to us. If there were other media, we were going to use them, but we are using Facebook because Facebook is available to us. And we are carrying a message, a message of change and a message of hope that Zambia can do better, that Zambia will do better. We have the resources, we have the wealth, we have the brains, we have the capability to do better. We cannot surrender the destiny of this country into the hand of very, very few selfish individuals. Very few, very few, extremely few selfish individuals. And we're supposed to cower and say, no, we are just going to, to continue this. If, if the people of Zambia would, would want to elect, re-elect this government, may it never be because we did not tell them what this government was. May it never be because we remained quiet and silent when leaking condoms were being supplied to the vulnerable in our society. May it never be for those reasons. May it never be because we thought and we misunderstood Christian theology and taught our people the lie that for them, as members of the Christian faith, they needed to comply to a regime whose duty, whose motive is to trample on the democratic freedoms of our people. May it never be for those reasons. If the people decide to choose, then they have decided to choose. But may it never be because we agreed to this kind of adulterated theology. A theology of compliance. May it, ne may it never be because of that. There are several uh, messages here. So, um, the, the, it doesn't appear like um, Mutale Chilumba is asking me, what is my proof that these are the president's friends? Uh, Mutare Chilumba um, is asking me, what proof do I have that the owner of Honeybee is the president's friend? I have proof. The gentleman owner of Honeybee is the president's friend. You are asking me, what proof do I have that the supplier of 42 fire trucks is the president's friend? I have proof that the owner who supplied 42 fire trucks is the president's friend. You are asking me who wanted to sell the land, the, the Christmas Hotel to NAPSA at $18 million. We have seen them on the picture. They are friends of the president. You are asking me to provide proof why whether it is true that the liquidator of KCM is the president's friend. How in the honeybee was Miringolungu selected to be the liquidator of KCM? Where did ZCCM Investment Holdings get this gentleman from? Now, Mutale Chilumba, these are some of the things because you cannot just say and, 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 and act like no, there is no link with the presidency. There is a link with the presidency. And that's the reason why we are speaking out. In any case, if there were no link with the presidency, there would have been an action. 
And the action is not just firing Stalo Chelofia, no. The action is in instituting independent investigations and commissions into how Honeybee Pharmacy got the $17 million tender to supply medicine at the Ministry of Health. It is to investigate how this company, before it is even incorporated, it has a tender. How the Zambia um, uh, Medi Medicine Authority and regulatory agency approved this company on weekends so that this company could be the main supplier of medication to our people. How the Attorney General of Zambia the Attorney General of Zambia justified the awarding of a tender to a sole trader in this scandal. Those are some of the questions. Of course, there are these issues that are being asked about um, the fact that that particular gentleman who is very close to the president that is not appearing anywhere on the listed directors of Honeybee. That is not how it works. Legal ownership of things is pretty much useless. You go to the beneficial ownership. That is the question that you need to ask. The Anti-Corruption Commission does not just go investigating about the legal ownership, beneficial ownership. Even if you have these three Zambians who claim to own Honeybee, where does the money end up? That is known as a beneficial owner who is the controlling mind behind that company, that is a beneficial owner. So as a corrupt person, you cannot just get away by trying to find some other people out there who incorporate companies for you, and yet they are accountable to you. You can't do that. That is the issue. In any case, it's a pure inquiry fair inquiry that is going to bring all these answers to the people of Zambia. When you are asking me what proof do I have, that is how I would answer you, Mutale Chilom. And I know that you as well as me are both motivated by this desire and passion that medicine that is planned for and budgeted for, for our people in the villages, in Isoka, in Imbala, in Serenje, and in Petaoke, okay, everywhere in all these places that they receive the medication. In most cases, they did not. For the medication they received, it was all fake. Lesson Tembo says, uh, evening, why is it politics in Zambia and Uganda similar? I was watching Bobby Wine being interviewed about homosexual, which is, which is happening in Zambia. Um, um, of course, that is that is what they try to do. And in fact, uh, even when Michael Chilufiasata was campaigning to be president of our country, uh, the same things were being said that Michael Chilufiasata was going to bring homosexuality. And in fact, one of the ministers currently serving in President Lungu's government was at the forefront, alleging that President Michael Sata was um, uh, promoting uh, homosexuality or gay rights. Um, I don't want to go into details of that, but I just want you to see how um, lies, how people make up lies about, um, about situations. And instead of arguing about ideas that are going to uh, develop the country, they begin bringing things that are just uh, distractions. Okay? And the homosexual question is always a distraction. Right? And that is, that is the problem. Honorable Muelo Mwape, which means there is no fairness here. Lungu fired, but he failed to fire Kampiongo. Who bought those fire tenders? Yes. All right? That's why Chitalu Chilufia is fired, but the problem is not um, uh, solved. Yeah. Um, just from the picture they post, you see a link. They joke together, they drink together, they dance together. <laughs> Shendazukas, yes, yes, indeed they do. They do that together, and pictures are all over. That's a good thing, right? Because we have seen them, we have seen the pictures, 
and I will not confirm whether the gentleman has he himself phoned me uh, to tell me about some of that, okay? I will neither confirm nor deny, but, but uh, the evidence is there, yeah. Uh, Kachil Fetayali is good in reporting people to the police. Why can't he report? Um, yeah, um, I don't know. I don't normally address uh, Mr. Chilu Fetayali uh, on my live broadcast um, uh, because I don't think I even need to uh, pay attention to his antiques. Yeah. Um, the video might not post very well, but I'm going to try, um, there it is. Yeah, yeah, so so the connection is not going to show on my Facebook page of how you can you can dial in. Um, it's, it's not posting, I think Facebook has made some changes, okay? Yeah. Uh, for me, all technocrats and civil servants that signed on any of the documents need to be checked and fired mostly chance so much here um yeah that probably is the case but in some in some instances we have instances where uh, honeybee supplies the medication and on the other hand on the on the other side just flags off the distribution of all this medication yeah um that's the caliber of youths we have in this country so sad david okay i think um someone is is answering david David, what is really shocking is that Yali took a petition to state house over privatization of the 90s, yet fall, failing to protest over Honeybee and seek an inquiry. Yeah. Um, of course, um, Yali has, is its own organization and they have their own priorities, okay? But they are quite concerning priorities. And they do have their own priorities, but of course they're quite concerning priorities. The question that we must ask ourselves each time that we are dealing with these issues is, is this for the people of Zambia? Is, is, is what we are advocating, answering concerns of our people today? Before you even support any political party or any political persuasion, is it, is it, is it helping our people? That is the most critical question in my opinion. Is it for the people or it's all just for the leader, right? We are, we are just doing this because we like the leader, but really are not looking at the, um, at the, at the ideas. We are not looking at the ideas behind it. What is informing our, our, our policy? Like, let's, let's look at export of copper, for example. What is the current policy that governs those issues? This is why, because if you do not have policy in place, and if you cannot make that policy work, there will always be these issues, like the issues we are facing at KCM, where KCM is now under liquidation, but it is heavily subsidized by the government because it's the government paying workers, firstly. Secondly, it's intimidating suppliers. So CEC, millions of dollars that they supplied um, electricity to, to KCM and KCM is not paying. And then the government is now coming in to intimidate all the suppliers. Those are, those are some of the issues that, that we are going to continually have. If you were to ask me, about what I would do with the mining sector, encourage foreign investment. Encourage foreign investment. How is that done? You give them shares, controlling shares, but you keep minority shares. You strengthen board members that sit on the board of those companies. You tighten the entire chain of production from the time that they mine copper to the time that they export it, you tighten it. You keep politics, the ruling party, away from, from companies. You keep them away. You appoint people to the board on the basis of their expertise, not on their loyalty to the party or their personal loyalty to you. You put the country first. And then you deal with problems very early on. You do not wait. First of all, you are stealing with Vedanta. 
You are the government ruling party. You are stealing with Vedanta. When now, for five years, you are stealing with them, you are going to them and claiming money for your by elections. When they fail to control things, because what happens is these foreign companies, they know the weaknesses in our government structures. They exploit those weaknesses. So you need to strengthen your internal systems, first of all, as a country, such that when these people come into your country to invest in your country, they find a very tight system, not a system that is vulnerable to corruption. And yes, Vedanta got away with the things that they were doing because the ruling party, the patriotic front, was porous and corrupt. That is why they got away with everything. But in any case, if it were my plan, you encourage foreign direct investment. When you do that, you, 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 are, you are limiting government risk. Because mining is expensive. So they're the ones that are putting the money down. You tell them, this is the copper, this is the gold. You put down the investments, you put down the machinery and everything else. We are going to tax you at so much. That's it. You tell them to employ your people. You tighten the system. You tighten the chain. That's all we need. You as a government, you concentrate on encouraging employment and taxing and, and royalties. That's it. And you are consistent in what you are trying to portray and the message you are sending. It's not a message of today, you are for direct investment, tomorrow you are against direct investment, the other day you are, it's, it's, it's all a confusion pattern. If you ask me the question right now, what is the biggest risk in the mining sector in Zambia? It is government inconsistency. <laughs> government inconsistency. Over KCM, for example, what has government done? It's all inconsistency. They are saying one thing and doing something else. They have a liquidator, but at the same time, they are doing what? It's inconsistency. When Mopani decides to, for example, close some mines, what does government say? Government already has board directors on, on, Copan, on, on Mopani. Are they not reading the reports? Are they not seeing the, the investments that are going into the mines or lack of investments? Are they not tracking how much copper we are exporting at Mopani? What are they doing? All those are important things that we need as a country in order for us to move forward from the mining sector perspective. So do I blame multinational companies? No, China. China, the country where we go to borrow billions of dollars from, how did China grow? China grew by foreign direct investment. All these companies from the West, they went to China to produce whatever they were producing. And what happened? China gained in terms of knowledge transfer. Their people had employment because they were looking for artisans. They were looking for trades. That is, that is what, that's why China is a superpower today. You cannot be a superpower just by yourself. Suddenly, you just say you're going to be a superpower. No, you encourage um, a foreign direct investment. That is the way to go. So all this nationalism that we, we like um, uh, using, it sounds good. But the problem is that it is sounding good but there is policy inconsistencies and that is sending a very wrong message. And as long as there is a very wrong message, these companies are going to exploit. They exploit because our government is not strong. It is not consistent. It does not know what it is doing. That is how we, we are going to bring change to our country and, and to our people. Jackson Samaleso says that um, uh, no fuel, no medicine. There is no fuel. Even fuel now is there's a shortage of fuel, the supply, fuel supply chain. You see, so, so when you are having all these inconsistencies in all the areas, it points to one thing, lack of leadership. 
That is all we are lacking at the moment. And that is the reason why we speak the way we, we speak. Okay. Carmen, you are so right. I absolutely do not believe a Zambian government should get involved in running of companies. Case in point, Zamtel, Zesco, and many others. Uh, Carmen, I agree with you. The reason why our government should not involve itself with running companies is simple. It is because it is going to transfer inefficiencies we see in ministries to companies. This government fails to monitor the Ministry of Health. It fails to monitor the purchase of fire trucks. It fails to monitor the money that it has. How can it monitor Zamte and Zesco and KCM now and several other companies? How can it monitor IDC? How can this president who cannot supervise the Ministry of Health supervise the IDC? The solution is to have companies. You as a government, you have shares in those companies. You sit on the board of those companies. You set the policy, general policy for that particular industry. And then you are getting taxes and you are encouraging these companies to employ your people. That's it. All these companies are going to bring in their money. Of course, the issue is that these companies are bringing in money in Zambia with the mentality that they are getting out of it. They are making a little bit of a profit. But you as a people as well, you are also encouraging that investment so that you can make something for your country. That's exactly how China grew. Right? Before it started off with, with all the state enterprises, first of all, it corrected that model, the model of encouraging direct foreign direct investment. Apple thinks that they are making money out of China, but the Chinese also are getting a benefit out of it. Employment, trades, very important, trades, manufacturing, and all these things. And they are also getting a very good name out of it. Okay? They're getting a very good name out of it. Everything now around the world made in China. That's how the Chinese got to where they are today to become the most, one of the most industrialized countries. It's not the richest. The Chinese are not, the, are not rich as citizens, right? It's still, it's still a poor country. <laughs> That's one of the things that confuses. So China is still, is still a developing country and yet it has the world's biggest economy. And the reason is because they encouraged direct investment. But look at the rhetoric that comes from the, from President Lungu himself. He says, I've, I've, I've gotten KCM. I don't care about foreign direct investment. Wrong message. What you need to say is, we want you to come. Come, bring your dollars. Bring your dollars into Zambia. There is a lot of investment opportunities. Bring your dollars, bring your industries, bring your manufacture. Let Zambia be the manufacturing base. Come on, come, come, come. Bring, 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 bring the money. And as we produce, we are going to be exporting those things. We are going to be exporting to other countries. That is how countries become rich. Countries do not become rich by a, a confusing policy. In disciplined statements from a head of state who has no clue about what he's doing. That is not how you can ensure prosperity for your people. No. This idea that no, we can go it alone in mining. There is no country that has gone it alone in mining. I live in Canada. We still have investments from Americans and the Chinese in Canadian mines. The Canadian governments are not there trying to, 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 to be involved. They, you know, there are, there are crown corporations that have shares in some of these, but they let investment pour in. Today, Canada, one of the richest countries on earth, they still want foreign investment in to come in. China, foreign investment. Zambia also, we need a strategy that attracts foreign investment, but with a consistent policy in place. I'm not using Bemba today. So, so with consistent policies in place so that we can develop our country, assure jobs to our country, and provide goods and services for our people. All 
all right? If there is any other question or contribution, I can bring it up here, we talk about it. Otherwise, we should be um, concluding. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. <laughs> God bless you and God bless our country. Thank you.